After Game of Thrones ended, I was afraid of getting hurt again by a new fantasy franchise, but I'm cautiously optimistic about Netflix's The Witcher series. It's based on The Witcher saga, and there's a lot of lore which can be confusing to new viewers. If you're not a totally up-to-date Gwent enthusiast, don't worry. I'll help you catch up and describe the all-important law of surprise. As for everyone's favorite fantasy card game, Gwent, well, you'll have to figure that one out on your own. You might just want to stop your binging of The Witcher until you learn more about it. If you found yourself overwhelmed by the first couple of episodes of The Witcher, don't worry, you're not alone. The first season tells stories of three characters. The sorceress Yennefer Vengerberg, Princess Cirilla, and of course Geralt of Rivia, the titular Witcher. All of the episodes are based on collections of short stories called The Last Wish and Sword of Destiny by Andrei Sapkowski. And the show really just throws you into the thick of this fictional universe. There are magic users, terrifying creatures, and a world where people generally don't find Henry Cavill gorgeous and charming. I know the last one's hands down the scariest and most difficult to comprehend, but try to suspend your disbelief for a little bit. The timeline can be a bit confusing, but the stories of Geralt, Yennefer, and Cirilla are all intertwined with one another. And the first time the Law of Surprise was mentioned was during Cirilla's story. Queen Kellant was hosting a ball for her daughter, Princess Pavetta. Cirilla's grandmother was playing matchmaker and hoping to form a strategic alliance by marrying off Pavetta to the right suitor, thus gaining enough leverage to keep the kingdom of Sintra safe. It's a fine plan, at least until a knight named Dooney shows up to stake his claim to Pavetta. Now that's an awkward party moment, but Dooney has his reasons for pulling this stunt. And no, the law of surprise isn't the fact that Dooney had the head of a hedgehog. That was a different kind of surprise. Anyway, Dooney invoked the law of surprise, which he felt was relevant in this circumstance because he had previously saved the life of King Rongner, the husband of Queen Calanth. Well, the late husband. He perished after Dooney's heroism for reasons, again, unrelated to hedgehogs. In the land of the Witcher, the law of surprise is a custom that people take very seriously. It comes into play when one person saves the life of another, like when Dooney saved King Rognar. The person whose life is saved is expected to offer a boon to their savior, but nothing as common as gold or an edible arrangement. Instead, they're expected to offer up a surprise. And I mean a surprise for both the giver and receiver. The savior who wishes to invoke the law of surprise can request the first thing that comes to greet you. This means that whatever or whomever greets the person who was saved when they return home now belongs to the savior. This could be anything from a loyal dog to your mother, but hey, if it wasn't for this person, you wouldn't be able to return home at all. Alternatively, the person who did the saving can request what you find at home yet don't expect. Most of the time, this ends up meaning a child. Now, you may think requesting to take possession of someone's kid negates the positive karma earned by saving their life. But I'm not here to question beloved Witcher traditions, I'm just here to explain them to people wondering why a man with a hedgehog head showed up to a party to claim a princess. Life was saved, that must be paid. The Law of Surprise promised Dooney what King Rongner had left at home without expecting it, and that was the princess. Surprise! <sighs> The logic here is that this puts the onus on fate to decide what the hero receives, which makes sense in the context of a fantasy world like this one. Helps people believe there's an order to this whole shit. The show also reveals that Dooney and Pavetta fell in love prior to this, which makes this particular instance sweet instead of horrifying. Well, at least for the viewer. The queen wasn't happy about this situation in the least, and had no intention of honoring her late husband's promise in favor of her desired political alliance. But luckily for Dooney and Pavetta, Geralt stepped in to calm everybody down by engaging in a sword fight, which is his way of dealing with most of life's problems. And hey, it worked! The queen finally consented to the union, and Geralt invoked the law of surprise for saving Dooney, and also requested that which you already have but do not know. This ended up being the daughter of Dooney and Pavetta, Ciri. Another surprise! In the books, it's implied that witchers often obtain children using this method and those kids grow up to be witchers themselves. Author Andrzej Sapkowski uses the law of surprise as a way to move the story along, but its origins are actually in ancient Slavic and Polish mythology. The surprise aspect is what makes it interesting in The Witcher, and it's a great way to shake up a story. While some surprises can be a good thing, don't let the YouTube algorithm keep you away from our videos! 
To make sure you get all the latest and greatest content from CBR, make sure you press that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. If you're on your phone, you're going to need to adjust them in the YouTube settings menu as well. So, what do you think about The Witcher series on Netflix? Are there aspects of the story that you hope it includes, or are plot devices like the love surprise just a little too convenient? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section below, and don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.